here to restore order to my world. With the demons in control, you understand the threat they pose to all my creations. What's up everyone? Hope you're all having an awesome day so far. QuakeCon 2020 is underway and it has been a unique experience to be a part of. Throughout the event we learned more about Doom Eternal and its first DLC named The Ancient Gods, among many more updates I will be talking about within this video. Before I get going, I always like to say thank you for those who took the time to watch this video and for the support you all have shown on the channel over the past year or so. This channel is mostly focused on anything Doom related, so if you love Doom and similar content, then you are in the right place. Be sure to subscribe and set up notifications to be up to date with everything I post here on the channel. Alright, let's get started. Doom Eternal has already been out for several months and I still find it very enjoyable to play and hone my skills so that one day I can finally beat the game on Ultra Nightmare. Yes, I haven't beaten it on that difficulty yet, but with time and patience, I'll be able to join the, the Cool Kids Club soon. On top of grinding to improve my skills, there have been a ton of updates that have improved the quality of life and replay value of the game over the past several months. There have been new skins to unlock for the Slayer and the mini demons that can be used for battle mode. Speaking of skins, be sure to log in to Doom Eternal to get your free QuakeCon Slayer skin, which looks really awesome by the way. With QuakeCon 2020, we had the opportunity to not only get a teaser of the first DLC, which I'll have a breakdown on it a bit later in this video, but the developers Marty and Hugo were able to update us on several things that have been on our minds for quite some time. Master levels have been a great way to challenge those who have beaten the campaign and want something a little more to satisfy them. I really enjoy playing the two that are available such as the Cultist Base and Arc Complex Master Levels which by themselves are a beast to master. The next Master Level that will be released soon will be for the Super Core Nest. This is my favorite level so far along with Mars Core and I can already imagine how difficult it will be. For those who know the secret on the Super Gore Nest where you can fight two tyrants, that should give us somewhat of an idea on the possibilities of what enemies we could face within that arena. Back in one of my first videos about Doom Eternal, I mentioned that the platform where the two tyrants appear would be a great place for a boss fight. I guess I wasn't too far off, except now on the master level version there will probably be at least a few tyrants, barons, and a doom hunter found in that arena alone. Just in that level there are quite a bit of challenging arenas so with it being a master level it will definitely be fun to play around with. For the most part a lot of us already knew that the Super Gore Nest would be the next master level due to a leak a while back showing all the master levels. After the Super Gore Nest there would be Exultia, Doom Hunter Base, Mars Core, and Final Sin. Now of course things can still change from here so either the order of them might change or even the actual levels released could be different. I would like to have a master level on Erdek as that would be very challenging to say the least. Just that level by itself is very difficult, especially a nightmare. Another thing that the devs mentioned would be the idea of doing the equivalent of a pistol start on a master level. In this case it would be a shotgun start and honestly with something like that on a master level would be almost near impossible. On top of that there would be some kind of achievement for beating a master level on Ultra Nightmare. I already have a difficult time beating the master levels on Nightmare so those two extra features would almost be overkill or insane to try. Of course there will always be some people in the community that will take a stab at it and beat them easily. I'm sure the Spud Hunter and Bite Me will be up for the challenge. What do you guys think? Are you excited for the new master level or don't really play them in the first place? I'm really excited for the next several months for all of the new updates that will improve the life of Doom Eternal. One other huge update down the road that was mentioned in the stream was the option to have a competitive mode and battle mode. I think that would be a great thing to have, especially how the matchmaking is already set up. There can be many times where you will be matched up with someone who just started playing Doom Eternal, or even get matched up with someone who is a champ at it. At least in my experience with battle mode, it was kind of short lived as I had many times playing with those kinds of players. Oftentimes I would just want to have a chill session of battle mode, but that would never happen. I think having the competitive mode would bring a lot of the better players over there which would then create a space for the less competitive and skilled players to just have a good time. Of course, for the most part, battle mode was created for players to really get good at the game and compete against highly skilled players. So for those who really just wanted more of a deathmatch mode would either have to suck it up and get good at this mode or just stick to the single player campaign. I've seen plenty of reviews and community posts to know that a good amount of players wanted something other than battle mode. And since that didn't happen, they pretty much stopped playing Doom Eternal after beating the campaign once or twice. Maybe with this new update, it might bring some players back to battle mode, or at least keep those people interested at least for a little while longer until the first DLC is available. 
Other than battle mode news, we got updated on other topics that bum me out to say the least. Invasion won't be available until sometime next year. This is mostly due to the whole pandemic causing the devs to work from home and by making the DLC the main focus for now. I really have been wanting to try out Invasion ever since it was first shown at QuakeCon back in 2018, and now I have to wait for it even longer. Of course, I'm not really complaining about it since it will still be something that will be available eventually and help with keeping the livelihood of Doom Eternal going strong for a longer period of time. Would you rather get everything all at once and get bored after a while or have everything spread out to keep you coming back for more? I think the latter is a better strategy in the long run and I'm totally for it. Another thing to mention is that the release of the game on the Switch is still being worked on and hopefully it will be available at least before the end of the year. I personally don't have a Switch, but for those who do and use them primarily for gaming, it's a huge bummer to see them missing out on an awesome game. I'm all for everyone to experience everything about Doom as it has always been a huge passion of mine and for others as well. Thankfully, a good amount of people who own a Switch are not a huge majority, so I'm sure most of them have already experienced the game on either console or PC by now. The reveal of the first DLC couldn't have come at a better time. The teaser actually showed off a good amount of content and for those who are really interested in the lore of Doom have caught a lot of details within it. The first thing we notice is the voice of the father, which ended up being Vega as he was inserted into Erdak's system and recognized his true nature during the campaign level. He mentions in the teaser to the Slayer that he is to restore order to his world. At this point, the Slayer has saved mankind by defeating the Icon of Sin and stopping the Hell Invasion. However, by doing so, he crippled Erdak's control of its dominion by awakening the Icon of Sin, defeating the Conmaker, and allowing Hell to invade Heaven and take full control. The Father then says that with the demons in control, you understand the threat they pose. Which by all means, the Slayer fully knows the extent of what Hell is capable of doing after dealing with them for many years and events throughout his life. Without the Conmaker to help the Dark Lord and generate an Argent energy, the Dark Lord must step in and take control of the situation. Moving on, we clearly get to see where the first DLC will take the Slayer, Erdak and Earth. In Erdak, it looks like a different region or location in the realm, or it could have just reshaped itself after the fall of the Khan. The first demon we see in the teaser is the Tyrant, but he looks a bit different. We see a blue glow in his eyes and other parts of his body. This may be something related to what was pointed out on the final artwork on the teaser that the Summoner is back. However, the artwork shows the Summoner, but it doesn't seem to have a physical body. So the Summoner could be more of a wraith or ghost-like demon this time around. As far as abilities, it might be slightly different from the Archvile. I think the Summoner might be able to summon super heavy demons, such as the Tyrant and possibly the Doom Hunter and Marauder. On top of that, since the summoner might be a wraith of some kind, I would imagine that only certain weapons would be effective against it like energy based weapons. That would at least keep things interesting when fighting them and I can imagine an arena where there is an archvile and summoner at the same time. I also don't think that the blue energy surrounding the tyrant is a buff as the archvile already buffs demons in his vicinity. Just something to mention. Another new demon would be the Maker Angels. These makers were found throughout the campaign possessing a staff and being at a higher level than the Maker Drones. Of course, now these angels are most likely demons based on their appearance and how hell controls heaven. They may end up having a different name, but they are no doubt the maker angels. Looks like they may be in the category of heavy demons, possibly even a super heavy demon. It's too early to know what their abilities are going to be, but based on the teaser we can know that they will be very agile from flying around and could use the staff as their primary weapon. The other part of the DLC brings us to what seems to be a UAC base. The teaser barely shows anything there and nothing new as far as demons, but I wonder if Samuel Hayden sends you there for a specific reason. Maybe there's a portal to hell found on that base that goes straight to the Dark Lord's realm. The devs did say in the stream that there are other lords that rule hell, so there's still the possibility to fight these other lords before the head honcho. What do you guys think about the base? Let me know down in the comment section. The hype for Doom Eternal is never ending and with all this new info and updates on the way, you can be sure that most of us will be playing the game for many more hours. The pandemic may have slowed down the development of the DLC, Invasion, and other things, but the wait will totally be worth it. We are blessed to have some of the most dedicated people in the gaming industry that work for id Software and Bethesda to ensure that we have a game that will last for a long time and love the game as well. It's a bummer that we couldn't be in person at QuakeCon, but I'm glad Bethesda created this event to the best of their ability during these hard times. So thank you Bethesda and id Software for doing what you do. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed QuakeCon so far. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video so we can get it out there more. You guys are the best, and be sure to check out my social media accounts to see other things over there as well at Rip and Tear Gaming. Until next time, fellow Slayers, don't forget to rip and tear. Peace.